Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at automation and the different automation modes that are found in Logic Pro. Automation is used to change different parameters in your project over time. So this can be as simple as making changes in volume, or you can change almost any parameter of any plugin or any software instrument. So let me show you how to do that. Now, in order to begin writing automation, we can go up here to this little button here, or we can press the letter A on our keyboard. And then you'll see that the region's a little bit grayed out, and you'll see this line here. Here, you'll notice we're currently set on read. So when you're in read mode, that means it's gonna read any of the automation that we've written in. So we currently don't have any automation written in, and you'll notice here in yellow, it's set to volume. So what that means is if I click here, you'll now see a line that goes across. And so that's my automation line for volume. So right now it's just set at zero. So that means nothing's gonna change. My volume is just gonna stay at zero dB all the way through this four bars. But if I click in here and add some points, then I can drag and change the volume automation. And then now if I press play, you'll see the fader here is gonna read the automation that I wrote in for the volume. And you'll, you'll hear what that sounds like. So that's writing in volume automation using the read function. Volume automation is probably going to be the thing you use the most, but as you'll see in a second, you can automate almost any parameter of any instrument or plugin. Now, if you want to get rid of these points after you've drawn them in, you can either double click and that'll get rid of them. Or if you just click on one of these and drag to the left, that'll get rid of all the points as you go. And if you want to get rid of automation completely, then just double click on the very last point and then you'll no longer have automation written in and you can just control the volume using the fader. So as I mentioned before, you saw we were using volume here. So now if I click in this little pull down menu, you'll see here if I go under main, so I have my basic volume, pan, solo, and mute. And then I've also got my retro synth, which is the instrument that's currently loaded in. And then under retro synth, I have all the different parameters in the synth listed that I can change. So let's go ahead and open up the retro synth. So let's say I wanted to adjust the filter cutoff. If I go back here to volume, go to retro synth, go to filter, and then cutoff. And then now, once again, I'll click a point here. So there, you could hear and you could see the filter opening up as it followed the automation. So that was using the read mode of automation. Now there's four modes in total. There's read, touch, latch, and write. So read, as you just saw, will read any automation that you input just by clicking in points with the mouse. Now the other three will actually make changes and write in the automation for you as you make changes on your instrument or plugin itself. So for example, let's go over to touch. Now when you're in touch mode, it'll read whatever you already had in the same way the read mode would. So if I press play, you'll see that it'll, it'll play the same way as before. But the difference is, is if I grab a different parameter or the same parameter, the cutoff halfway through, then it's gonna make changes in here based on what I do in the actual plugin. So I'll show you that. So I'm gonna press play and then halfway through, 
I'll start messing around with the cutoff in here and you'll see that that'll change what's written in here. So there you saw it kept the first line here. And then as soon as I touched a parameter in here, in this case, the cutoff, then it wrote that in here. But one of the important things with the touch one is as soon as you let go, which I did at the very end, then it remains the same as what you had before. So it doesn't overwrite any parameter. So just to demonstrate that once more, I'll hit play, I'll change the cutoff early, and then you'll see that the rest of it will be untouched. So there you saw it, it wrote in the beginning and then it kept everything as I had it before. So if you're gonna be inputting automation in this way, touch is probably the one that I'm gonna recommend you use because it's the less destructive when compared to latch and write. And I'll demonstrate that now. So let's move on to latch. So latch is similar to touch, as in it won't start writing any automation until I make a change. So it'll read what's here until I start making a change. But then from that point on, when I let go, it won't revert back to what's written. It'll overwrite the parameter based on where I've left it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna hit play. I'll let it read for a little bit and then I'll make a change and then you'll see what happens. So there you saw, I let it play at the first little bit. I made my change. And then when I let go here, then I replaced the rest of the automation here until the end. So when I let go, it didn't just keep reading what was there before, rather it just replaced everything from that point onwards. So that's something to be careful with when you're using latch. And then the last one is write. And you even get a warning sign when you go to write because it says it'll erase multiple parameters in one go without touching anything. So in this case, as soon as I hit play, it's just going to erase everything until I start making changes. So you'll see that. So there you go. So you saw it erased everything right at the very beginning until I grabbed it and then it wrote in that automation. And then when I let go, then it just kept continue on writing there. And then when I stopped, it actually reverted back to touch. So those are the four different automation modes you can use. They all write in the automation slightly different. So it's a good idea to know which one you want to use before you get started. I'm going to demonstrate here how you can actually write in multiple parameters at once. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to press play once again, and I'm going to adjust the cutoff and the resonance both at the same time. And now here you'll see it lists resonance. So you can see the resonance is written in. And then if we go to our pull down list, it wrote in the cutoff as well. Now, if you want to see both of these at the same time, you can go to this little arrow here. And then now I've got cutoff, volume, and resonance. And then if you want to see more parameters, you can go down here, the little plus button, and now pan, for instance, we could either write in some pan information or we could input it using the touch function as well. So there's some different ways that you can use automation as well as the four different automation modes you have available to you in Logic Pro. Each of them read and write automation a little bit differently, so it's good to know how each of them work before you go ahead and start writing automation. Don't forget to download your free Logic Pro X hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. 
If you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comments below as well. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.